Happy Tuesday, everybody. I'm KHOU 11 meteorologist Pat Catlin here with a look at your tropics update. Again, we do this update every night at 8 p.m., regardless of what's going on, just to keep you in the loop here as we go through the peak of hurricane season. Uh, and out in the Atlantic right now, we do have two spots, and this is the first time we've had two spots to keep an eye on in weeks. It's been very, very quiet through the tropical Atlantic here through the peak of hurricane season. So the first wave that's in front, that's wave number one, that has a high probability of developing. I think within the next 24 to 48 hours, we're gonna have a named storm from that. Behind that, we've got wave number two that just moved over open water from the west coast of Africa. And it's still getting its act together, but I do think that within the next few days, we'll have to keep an eye on it as it moves into a more favorable environment for turning into something. All right, let's talk about wave number one first. As of 7 p.m. Central Time, this was uh, moving to the northwest at about 10 miles per hour. Winds were estimated around 35 miles per hour, but notice how it's still kind of elongated. We don't really see a, a concentrated core here with the system. So the system is still trying to organize into a tropical depression or a tropical storm. But for the time being, because it's still disorganized, uh, it's just designated as a tropical wave invest, invest 92L. Now the reason why the Hurricane Center gives these designations of an invest is so that they can run computer simulations on what it may do. And so we get that in the form of spaghetti plots. So each one of these white lines here indicates a different computer models simulation of where this system will go. And look, they're in great agreement. There is no widespread on this. Every single model says, yeah, this thing, if it forms, is going to go to the north and west. So it clears the Caribbean and the United States, at least the southern United States, easily. No threat of any type of interaction there. But the more time this spends over open water, the more potential it has to become stronger. So let's take our two models here, the American model and the European model. The European model is here in red. The American model is in black. And you can see by Sunday, both of these models in fairly good agreement that this system goes well north of the islands here. And I'm saying fairly good agreement on the exact location. Maybe we're a couple hundred miles apart here, but that's pretty good looking uh, five days down the road. Uh, both are also in good agreement that this will strengthen once it gets to this part of the world. So if this wave can hold together and actually turn into something, I think by the weekend we're looking at a strengthening system, maybe even a hurricane. The good news though is that there is an area of high pressure out over the open Atlantic just to the east of these um, of this uh, developing wave. And that is going to literally scoop this thing up and pull it all the way around and eventually towards the north and east. So both models pull this system to the north and both also take it on that trajectory around that area of high pressure. The European model there in black moves a little bit quicker than the American model here in red, which actually brings it on a close brush with Bermuda. But bottom line is that neither uh, model takes this thing anywhere close to the United States. So we look at the overview here on the big board. Again, wave number one, wave number two. Let's show you what it looks like on our tropical organization map. On this, you basically have to look for uh, concentrated areas of red, yellow, and orange. That indicates where there's higher levels of spin in the atmosphere. So we put this into motion. There's wave number one. And again, by Saturday, looks like it's starting to get into some sort of organization. Behind it, wave number two also tries to get a, col a consolidated core going as we get into Saturday. As we keep this going, again, Wave number one races off towards the north and east. Here's wave number two now by next Wednesday coming into the Caribbean. It doesn't look strong, but that's going to be the piece of energy that we'll have to watch. And then look at this behind it. There may be a third wave moving off the west coast of Africa behind this and kind of trailing behind through the Atlantic. So this one we will not have to worry about, but it is these two. And even though they don't look very weak and not very well defined here on the model, if some piece of energy can make it into the Caribbean, we're going to have to perk up and just keep a better eye on it because, you know, when you're at this point in the year, anything that gets into the Caribbean can easily scoop into the Gulf. But again, with this, we're looking all the way, you know, eight days out into the future. So a lot of things can change. There's a lot of moving pieces here, literally. Uh, but again, that first wave 
does look like it's going to recurve and go out to sea, moving off towards the north and east. Great reminder, though, we are in the peak of hurricane season right now. The official peak is September 10th. Today is the 16th. Uh, we're pretty much in the peak from now through mid-October. So stay with us. Every night at 8 p.m. we do these updates. Of course, we'll have an update coming up on the KHOU 11 News at 10 o'clock. We're with you every day, keeping you in the loop here on what's going on. But as of tonight, no imminent threats of any kind in the tropics to 